For this test, what we're going to do is we're going to actually run a dyno test, an absorber dyno test. And like we talked about in previous movies about absorber dynos, we've got our torque channel set here that is a torque arm dyno, engine direct drive, your datamite specs, you've got your engine dyno RPM set up here, you got your torque channel calibrated here, and now you can just click on start dyno run. And here you can see we got our gauges. And we got a torque reading here. We'll start up our engine. Get some engine RPM. We got some torque. And now we're going to, I'm going to press the F1 key to start recording. I'm going to start loading up. I'm starting to load up the thing, the dyno, by opening the water valve. And now I'm going to start the accelerating test. We're going to accelerate through the RPM range. And when we get as high as you want to go, we're going to kill the throttle, bring it back. Torque will drop off. I'm going to press F2 to say I'm done recording. If you want to save this data set, we do, but I don't want to save it to the defaults. I want to go in here and make some changes in this test setup. And one thing I want to do is the type of test is not custom. I want to measure torque and horsepower from the dyno. And I may want to, I'm going to change the uh, name of the test. Well, let's call it shakedown because we're just getting things going here. I'm going to put a 001 on the end because next time it'll actually increment that number up by 2 and 3 and 4 as I go along. And let's say I want to add a new folder name. Call it shakedown. And say, nope. I don't want to have those test comments. I'm going to blank them out. And now I'm going to go and download the data. And it says I got one run of 8.8 .8 seconds. Now, this is kind of a funny looking power curve because the torque is so constant because I'm doing this with sensors on the dyno. And that's why this horsepower curve is supposed to be a straight line also, is because the torque was constant. I should have showed you this before we ran the test, but here we have our absorber dyno test set up to tell the program what kind of test we're running. We're starting at a low RPM, we're releasing to a high RPM. That's our max RPM. That's our minimum RPM, like was discovered, uh, covered in a previous movie. And we can make a graph of this. Now, this graph is of time, and it's showing us the entire test. And you can see here, there's an awful lot of stuff here of this 40 seconds or so. Here is the real test, this accelerating part, when we're at a high torque number. If I graph just the power run, you can see that's what we're getting. We're just getting the acceleration part. We're getting 8.8 .8 seconds. So if we do a power curve, it's going to only show us what happened during the acceleration, not during the deceleration or blipping the throttle at the beginning and all that stuff. And this is exactly how it's supposed to work. But many times, engines don't cooperate as nicely as they did in this test. So let's do this thing again. Do another power run. Start loading up the dyno, getting our torque. Press F1 to start recording everything. Start loading it up. And then we're going to get ready to do our axle. So we start doing our axle. But something happens, we have that dip there. Let's press F2 to stop the recording. You want to save this data set? Because everything is pretty much set up, I'm going to say, yes, I do. I'm going to allow it to accept the defaults that are up here. And it found one run here of 3.6 seconds. Now, the run was actually much longer than that. And you're wondering, let's, see what, let's take a look and see what it looks like. 
and it's only got from 4,000 up to about 8,000 RPM. Let's see what's happening here. Graph this. And I'm going to go back to my time graph. Look at all the data. And there it is. But here's that dip. The dip was, uh, oh, somehow I got, I got to change this. It, it has our corrected torque and corrected horsepower. Now we'll get something that makes sense to me. Okay, you can see we have this big dip here. We got torque being constant, but we got this big dip here. So let's see what it says just the run is. A graph just the run. It says there's that dip, and then it went up to 8,000. But we're saying we want the data below 4,000 also to be included. We want this data starting from about here, down around 2,000, up to 8,000 to be in our power run. But it won't do it. The reason it won't do it, because if the program looks at this, it says here's the highest RPM I've seen, and if I back up, I go down to here, and that must be the end of the begin. I'm sorry, the beginning of the run because the RPM starts going up again and back down. So, if you have an engine that doesn't cooperate, and this is going to happen, it's very hard to control a torquey, a peaky engine. Um, they this stuff will happen, and what you have to do is you have two choices. You can I'm going to again save it to a new name where I'm actually going to do this cut. And, and me saying cut here has nothing to do with it. It's just I'm going to edit out this, edit this data, like we did in a previous movie. And I'm going to draw a box around what I want to keep. Okay? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say all the recorded data is the test. Do I want to make that significant? Now we got 6.8 seconds of data. And you can see now we do have the data starting at 1600 going up to 7200. If we graph that, graph a power run out of that, you can see we got what makes a lot more sense to us. We get the full RPM range. Another thing that we can do, I'm going to pull out out of the history log the previous test. Okay, here's the previous test. And there's another thing we can do. I prep this with a another channel here. And what I have connected to this is what I, is a wide open throttle switch. But I didn't call it a wide open throttle switch. I'm going to call it a wide open throttle switch right now. And this is a switch that if you use it, it's going to say all the time you have the switch held down, I am going to and I'm going to call that the power run. So in order for this this effect or this change to have an effect, I'm going to have to go out and redetermine the beginning and end of runs. And it looks like I had the switch held down for 10 seconds. And you see now we get this full RPM range from 16 up to 8. And if I graph it, I'm going to go back to my time graph. Here is all the data. And what I'm going to do with this also, oh, I've got to change this again. Engine, torque, and I'm going to turn this channel on so you can see what's going on here. This is when the switch was held from here to here. And I'm going to turn the filtering off so it doesn't look so rounded. This nice sharp up and this nice sharp down. This is the wide open throttle switch is doing. And if you tell the program, like I did, use the wide open throttle switch to find the beginning and end of the test, you'll see here, if I graph just the power run, that's what happens. We get just the data where the switch is held down. Now, me doing this not on a real diner, you can see the switch, I should have let go of the switch right here. 
and I didn't. I let go of the switch back here. But you can see how it works. And if you do it this way, this is just shows you another way of finding the beginning and end of a test with using a wide open throttle switch. So if you have an engine that is hard to control and you might get ups and downs in your accelerating test, the only options you have is to either cut the beginning and end like we did on that other screen. It won't work on this screen. Go back to full view. Or to use the wide open throttle switch to mark off the beginning and end of the test. It is the only way that you can overcome this problem of uh, an engine that will not accelerate smoothly and has major uh, hills and valleys in it.